Crazy Stupid Podcast. I think what's been very interesting about the Dune Discord, where there's always like these two camps of people, the individuals that are committed and have read the source material, and then you also have people that really love film, really love cinema, really love television, and they're watching these things for the first time. And many of them, not all, but, but some of them have not read or caught up on the source material. One of the things that I sort of realized after watching Dune for the second time again is that there will be moments when a director of a film or TV show wants to adapt something, it's always going to come down to, is this going to enhance the story or not? That's the question that I, I'm constantly asking myself while I'm watching these things that I know that I've read. The other thing that I would say is that we also have to leave room for more commentary being added in. It's not just about enhancing the commentary. It's also about Applying it. Yes, applying it to the real world that we're living in right now. And when we do that, there will be moments where additional commentary will be added in the story. And sometimes it can feel like people that have read the books don't like the latter mm -hmm. because that's not what the books were about. The new commentary weren't necessarily addressed in the books. Therefore, there should not be a space to talk about this new commentary. And I don't I don't think I agree with that. We've talked about some of these examples before. One of my favorite mediums is The Last of Us. One of the biggest fans of the video games that you will ever meet. In the show, when Joe goes to meet Tommy, there's a lot of conversations about what society can look like and how this medium of an apocalypse has forced a lot of these communities to really think about what it means to collectively support each other. And the word communism comes up. And there's a few moments where you're sort of asked as a viewer to sit with these new ideas of are there better ways for us to exist in a society? This is not me saying communism versus capitalism. It's just asking us to think about these things. That was not something that happened in the video game. That wasn't one of the main themes that were brought up. So when that happens, for me as someone that thinks that the story is perfect in the games, I cannot look to someone who watches that episode and say, that's not what The Last of Us is about. This is an adaptation where they're trying to enhance and add more commentary to apply it to the things that we're experiencing right now in the world. You may not like that directors choose to do that, but it is something that happens often. Another example that I've talked to you about with House of the Dragon. In the books, the main story is really about Rhaenyra and Aegon. In the show, the story so far is centered around Alicent and Rhaenyra. All the characters are still there, but they've spent a lot of time unpacking the worldview of Alicent and allowing us to see that in a lot of instances, she has worked to maintain this patriarchal system versus with Rhaenyra, that's not where her story has gone. And so because they have made that shift of where we're prioritizing our time, that's going to add a new conversation. It's going to add a new commentary to the story that may not have existed as prevalently as it did in the books. Again, that's not a good or bad thing, but I do think there has to be space for us to look at the beauty and the source material and seeing the perfection in that and being okay, being comfortable with looking at these adaptations and saying, one, have I done a good job at enhancing the themes? Two, can I be open to other commentary being placed in this world that I fall in love with? And I think sometimes with this Dune conversation, a lot of book fans are not allowing spaces for the latter example. And I, I just, I disagree with that. There definitely needs to be more space to just discuss the adaptation. If you've read the books, I don't think there's anything wrong with you allowing the book to like inform your interpretation of the film. I just think it's wild. It is wild to come so strong in a comment section to use the books to just refute and downplay somebody else's interpretation of the film. People are making a lot of assumptions. It's this whole media literacy conversation. I'm starting to hate that term now, honestly. Like for instance, the white savior conversation conversation around Paul. I think that two conversations are being conflated in one, particularly when it comes to Frankie's video. I think that there is a conversation about whether Paul is a white savior, acts as a white savior in the films, in the films as we have seen thus far. And then there is a conversation about whether or not Dune is a white savior narrative. And I think those two things are being conflated into one. Yes. And I think that yes. they are a separate conversation. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I think that a person can reasonably look at the first two films of Dune 
and say that Paul Atreides, as we have seen thus far, is operating in the film as a white savior, right? And like in Frankie's video, like she gave several examples of that. And people made the assumption that she was lacking media literacy. And here is where I think things are getting so murky. To me, as the term media literacy is being used right now, I think people are using it as your ability to interpret the intention of the creator when they were making the film. When I watched that video, I didn't see Frankie say anything about the intentions of Denis Villeneuve. She was simply saying he is operating, Paul Atreides is operating as a white savior in this film. He is an outsider to this culture. He is a white person. He is able to magically understand everything about this culture he moves to the forefront of this culture becomes a leader of these people and leads them to victory in this film that's what happens that is Paul Atreides operating as a white savior in this film somebody saying that does not then equate to them saying that Dune even in the films so far is a white savior narrative you can say he's operating as a white savior in these films and then also understand that we are meant to critique that. Yes. Because this is the thing that's so mind boggling. I'm like, everybody was being like, no, the whole point is that he's trying to, that Frank Herbert and da, da, they're trying to critique that. Da, da, da. Yes, 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 true. But in order to critique it, did they not use the trope? Right. Exactly. That, that is what happened. They use the trope to critique it. And you can see that mainly in the films through Chani. Mm-hmm. Right. Chani is the main vehicle through which we are able to see that Paul Atreides operating as a white savior in the film was an intentional decision because we are heading in a direction where we will later critique that. I think another thing that people need to be OK with is saying this was a very impactful book. It was very important. It was very well written. It tackled a lot of important themes. That does not mean it tackled those themes perfectly it's not infallible it's not infallible i've read up on some of the ways that dune has been misinterpreted and one of the groups of people who love dune the novels are white supremacists and you can say they lack media literacy if you want maybe they do i have to finish it but there's enough there for them to work with like there's enough in the source material for them to work with where they read that and they read it as a pro-authoritarian aryan race like utopia like that's how they interpret dune and one of the only reasons why they did not like the films was because of the casting this is why this type of thing is so important people i know there's people who i've seen in our conversations who are upset because they're like man because of the way that they cast in the movie now people can't think outside of race when they critique the books okay fine but one of the main reasons why white supremacists who love Dune 1, Dune, they love the Dune book, mm-hmm. the first book, which is the first two movies, that's all they're about. One of the main reasons why they were like, they don't mess with the movies is because the movies made it impossible for them to read their understanding yes. of Dune into the, t- into the text because of the casting. Yep. Even and cat the casting is still extremely problematic. This is not us saying that they did a great job. There should have been more Arab actors. There should have been more Middle Eastern actors. Even with that flaw though, the simple casting of Zendaya and all of these actors of color representing the Fremen people has prevented this problematic reading of Dune to be applied to the films. I'm not saying that you have to spell everything out for your viewers and readers. I'm not saying that. I don't even think that the Dune part two spelled everything out. I think that there is enough there that like you still have to do some thinking and Mm -hmm. analyzing to come away with a deep understanding of what was happening, right? They don't look into the stare into the camera and tell you what they're trying to say, but they give you enough so that you can get there. And I think that's so important, especially if you're going to use the tropes to critique them. Yeah. You have to give people enough. And to me, it is starting to sound like based off what I've read so far in the books and based off of what people in our comment section have told us, what I am starting to think is that perhaps when Frank Herbert wrote the books, he didn't give enough. Perhaps he did not provide enough voice to the criticisms he was trying to make for that point to be clear. And it is what it is. That doesn't have to take away from the impact of it. That doesn't have to take away from how good it is, but like we should be able to talk about it. And be okay with it. Yeah. We, we can love the books and still say, 
there are some things that could have been done better. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I'll finish them and maybe I'll change my mind. Like maybe I'll redo one and there will be things in it that I don't know about that do help make this point a little bit clearer. But I do know that many of the people who over the years have critiqued Dune for its use of these tropes are not people who lack media li literacy. I mean, there are like scholarly articles about Dune that do not like the way it handled its themes. So when you see people getting online and disagreeing with some of the things that they've seen or pointing out some of the problems with it, that does not automatically mean that they didn't get it. It's interesting because with, with the, the change with Chani, when it comes to like the conversation of adaptation versus the source material, a lot of times they fact check, not the plot, but they try to fact check the commentary mm -hmm. that can exist. And I'm not a fan of that also, because sometimes the commentary may look different. For example, the changes that they did with Chani changes the commentary about her character. You cannot keep using the books to fact check how film watchers interpret Chani's character, because that was a change for the films. That you can't use it as a fact check anymore. And yeah. I've seen people do that. And so the question that I'm going to have is, we know that there have been some pretty significant changes that Denis Villeneuve made in this second film. So that should tell us in the third film, there's going to be even some more changes. And if you know what happens, you know what I'm talking about. And so to keep saying, read the books, read the books, read the books, it's going to start to become a bit of a mute point. If you really think about it, because there's going to be enough significant changes where these three films should be able to stand on their own and these three films should allow us to have conversations and have spaces where we can create a commentary on it without having to keep looking back at the books because that's not what a lot of these people are doing. When it comes down to it, there will be people that will not read the books. There will be people that will only watch these three films and we have to be okay with allowing these film watchers to provide conversations of commentary on Denny Villeneuve's adaptation of the books, not the books themselves. We, we have to start, I, in my opinion, we have to start being okay in letting spaces of two different things to exist. And right now, it doesn't really seem like a lot of us are allowing just the film or TV show watchers of these source materials to do that. Mm -hmm.